Hey, it's Scott, the Skincare Sherpa, and um, I'm here recording today, letting you hear a little bit into my mind, my thought process, and things on on all things skincare and building a skincare brand. Uh, today, I thought I'd talk about one of the most important things for me and probably for you too is uh, knowing what product you're going to pick or what at least what niche or audience you're going to serve or what niche you want to go into. So I wanted to tell you a little bit about what I was thinking when I started my brand and and, and the thought process behind it. Uh, so that's what we'll talk about. But before I get into that, I was I'm trying to figure out a way, you know, with this these new recordings that I'm doing going along with the Sherpa theme. I was trying to figure out something to call to call you the people that are the people that are listening to me. You know how everybody has their little thing. You know Taylor Swift has the Swifties and Lady Gaga. I think she has her, the the monsters or little monsters. And so I'm trying to figure out something cool, catchy. You know, just trying to be cute. And so I was like, what do I what do I call people? And you know, this is all the stuff that you that just keeps you from doing what you're supposed to be doing, and you can't figure out a good name, so then you don't wind up doing it. When at the end of the day it doesn't really matter but i i looked up uh the sherpas you know they had just a little uh fun fact there the really tight-knit group and they really consider the people that they take on the expedition with them uh they really care about them and they're kind of like family to them so they don't just call them customers you know they call them some they, they call them something that's a lot more close-knit and so i, I looked up climber i thought hey i could say climbers hey climbers because you know we're talking about climbing this this mountain together and so the climber I looked up climber in the in the language of the uh, of the Sherpas in the Himalayas in Tibet and I I put it in the computer and it came out with some as like a hundred letters in this word or something maybe not a hundred but a lot of letters in this word and it tells you that the that the meaning is mountain tiger skill person so a mountain tiger skill person that is is what a climber is, and that's what I was going to call you, but I don't think I'm going to call you that because that's way too much to say. But so for now, we'll just go with climbers. Uh, so this is all still new, so we'll see we'll see how it um, how it progresses. So back to how I pick my product or pick the product. You have a choice of picking a product, or you can pick an audience and um, a niche inside that um inside that audience but i started so I, I i told you that i started a vitamin e oil skincare brand and it didn't really start out as a vitamin e oil brand because i knew that i wanted to sell a skincare product i wasn't sure what to do and 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 who to go after but like i mentioned i'm an entrepreneur and I firmly believe in finding out what people want and then giving that to them as opposed to creating something that you want to sell to them and then kind of forcing that on them, at least in this one one area that I'm talking about. There's kind of three different areas that we'll talk about. Uh, one of them is, is this that I'm talking about, find out what people want and then give it to them. Another is find a niche or a product that's missing in the marketplace and and create that. And then the third is if you have an audience, um, an audience already and find and creating a product that that they want. But so I did not know what I was going to sell and I wanted to be sure to to sell something that would be successful. And I, when I talk to people about it, I, you know, people come to me I always, and always ask me, what should I sell? They don't say, what should I sell? They say, I have this idea for this, you know, oil that you put on your fingernails and it makes your fingernails softer. And then I, I wind up asking them, well, does anybody want that? Or are you just trying to make that and, and go and try to get people to get it? And I always, the, the analogy I give is that, you know, you go to a restaurant and you sit down and the waiter comes up to you. You tell them what they want. They go back there and prepare it for you and then bring it out to you. They don't just come up to you. You know, you've never been to a restaurant before where the waiters come up to you and said, buy this sirloin steak. You know, this is a sirloin steak. This is the best sirloin steak for you and, and you need to have it and you're going to love it. So take it. You know, you wouldn't you wouldn't like that very much in a, in a restaurant. And that's what I was trying to avoid doing when I was creating my my product. 
But so I had to start somewhere and try to figure out what people wanted. And I knew that I was going to start selling it on Amazon. So I wound up, um, I did a little research on Amazon. And at the time I found out that vitamin C serum was a big seller on Amazon. And so I wanted to see how well I would do with vitamin C and then see what kind of information I could get I could get once I'd started selling the vitamin C because you probably know that you, you never really know what business you're in until you start, you know, to start getting in the business. You'll start down a road and think it's going to be one thing. But then what winds up happening is you learn along the way and there, and the whole thing changes. So I wasn't stuck on vitamin C, but I knew that it would give me some good information so I wound up um, finding a company or working with a company that would allow me to private label just a few bottles of vitamin C serum. And, uh, and so I wound up getting those, uh, buying, I think I bought maybe 10 or 20 bottles of vitamin C serum and I had a label created and, and I just went to Fiverr and looked up label creation and found some cheap, I don't know, 20 or 20, 30 dollar um, gig on there for someone who would create a label for me and I had those labels made just a few of them and I had those labels put on the bottles of vitamin C serum that were already made you know that I private labeled and so private label is when somebody else makes it for you they make a bunch of it they make thousands and thousands of bottles and then they let you buy it you put your label on it and then sell it as if it was yours it's not custom because anybody else who buys it as well is going to have the same, it's going to be the ex exact same product with the exact same ingredients. It's just the label and the marketing would be different. But it is a good way to, to test out something quickly and easily and, and it doesn't cost much money at all. So I sent in the 10 or 20 bottles of vitamin C serum to Amazon through Amazon FBA and then and then people surprisingly started buying it and what that allows you to do though when people start buying is amazon allows you to look in their back end in their data and analytics and it lets you find out the search terms or the keywords that people were typing in when they were buying that they used to find your vitamin c serum and it also lets you know that this keyword is associated with this product. So when someone bought this product, they use this keyword to find it. And so in doing that, what I realized was that there was a lot of people who were searching for vitamin E oil on Amazon and my vitamin C serum had some vitamin E oil in it, but people weren't necessarily looking for vitamin C. They were looking for vitamin E and they just bought my product because it had it in there. And so once I knew that people were looking for vitamin E oil, I did some research, some further research on Amazon and found out that there were only two or three people selling vitamin E oil on Amazon. And so when I saw that and, and they, they didn't have a lot of reviews and I knew that I could outmarket them, I could make better images, I could write better copy, I could have a better product than them, I could have a better price point, all those things that were in my favor. I decided to sell to start the vitamin E oil brand and so that's what I did I I wound up continuing selling the vitamin C serum but there was a lot of people selling vitamin C at that time as I mentioned and so I did, didn't really want to compete with them they had many more reviews than I did which is kind of the currency on Amazon meaning you know it's hard to, to compete with someone who has thousands of reviews when you only have a couple two or three so, but I, but I didn't have that problem in vitamin E. And so I, I got the vitamin E oil created and it was in two different scents, a scented and an unscented version, two different sizes. And I don't even think I started with that uh, complex at first. I think it was just half ounce bottles of the scented and unscented version. And then when people started buying that, I wanted to offer them a larger quantity and that larger quantity uh, was also, I sold it for more money and also had a higher profit margin on it. But so I, I, I started the vitamin E oil just based off of pure research on Amazon, finding out what, 
people um, were selling and what people were not selling and use that data to, to create a product. I didn't just come at it with the idea that um, that I knew what people wanted or that I knew what I wanted and wanted to make people buy that. Um, the other, so, so and, and that worked out well for me. Um, in this, in the next product that I have, so th that was vitamin E oil, this um, product that I launched three or four months ago called Awakened Skincare, that is a set of, um, it's not a set that you can buy it in a set, but it's, it's uh, a facial serum specifically for each one of the seven chakras. So there's the, the root chakra, the, the sacral chakra, the solar plexus, heart, throat, third eye, crown. Um, I may have missed one in there, but there's seven of them. And each one of them um, is an energy center that, that helps you manage different things like the throat chakra helps you speak your voice. Um, the third eye chakra in your forehead helps with your intuition. The crown chakra connects you to a higher power. And the, the, the line is designed for people who are on a spiritual journey. So this is people who are into yoga, into meditation, into crystals, singing bowls, Reiki, energy work, those type of, those type of people. And so I started that brand uh, differently than I started the the other one. For this one, I was just looking around. I always have my eye open to out there. You know, everywhere I go, I'm looking. I you know, you could I go to the the mall and I'm looking to see what's popular at the time, or what what's popular but but could use a, a skincare or personal care product added to it. You know, I go to a kennel. I'm like, oh, I wonder what they use to wash the dogs in here to keep their paws um soft so i'm always thinking and looking for skincare products and um i'm in the spiritual community myself you know i i, I dabble in it and and i realized just in doing some research on that that the the spiritual people are very passionate about it and and there was no skincare line or skincare brand dedicated to people on a spiritual journey what I found was that there are essential oils that have uh, different scents and qualities to them that are designed to put directly on that chakra. So you have an essential oil and you put it on the crown of your head to help awaken or balance or open your, your crown chakra. But there's no facial serums for that. And eventually the plan is once the facial serums kick off, then to follow it with a, a complete line that includes a wash or a scrub or a moisturizer or something like that. So that um, and so that started because I looked around, saw nothing else out there existed like that, and I wanted to to create something like that is for the uh, for the spiritual community. And so I had that pro did some research, worked with my formulator. And came up with the seven different serums that that will will work great for that, and that are designed specifically for the the spiritual community. The challenge that I've had with that product and is that it's brand new, so there's no other facial serum out there for for people on a spiritual journey, and specifically for people who are looking to awaken and balance their their chakras. And so the challenge is that when I'm trying to advertise on Amazon, Amazon is a search based um, search platform. And so you go to Amazon when you want something, you type in diapers or you want a sippy cup or you want a bicycle rack or something. It's all search based and no one is searching for a chakra facial serum because there's no such thing. And so I can't really rely on the search traffic, which is what you need to rely on on Amazon. And so what I've had had to do is try to have it piggyback on other chakra products. So when you type in chakra on Amazon, 
what you get is bracelets. You know, there's chakra bracelets that have each one of the chakras has a stone uh, or crystal that corresponds with it. And so you can find a bracelet that has each of the crystals or stones in it. You can find chakra cards. You can shine, find chakra books, chakra candles, chakra mats, things like that. Um, but like I mentioned, there's no such thing as a chakra facial serum. And so I am the way that I've decided um, I'll have to do it is I'm going to have to try to piggyback on those other products. So the piggyback means the listing is there and the images are there and everything is set up on Amazon for it. And, um, but you can advertise in Amazon PPC by having your product show up on other people's product pages. And you've probably seen it before where you're looking at a product and then it either says, you know, you might also like or sponsored products, you know, different products that either complement it, that people are advertising for it, or sometimes you'll even see it be frequently bought together. Um, you know, that's not really a part of the advertising platform. That just happens, not necessarily by coincidence, but when people start buying things together, then Amazon knows to show it to people so that they can make more money selling it. But you probably have seen it, it's ads um, that are related. So if I know that there's a shock for card set out there, I can take the ASIN. The ASIN is the number that's associated with that product on Amazon. And we'll show, I'll show you this later in later videos when I'm going through it and doing it. But I could take that ASIN and put it in my, ad, in my um, PPC campaign and tell Amazon that I want to show my product on this detail page, on the page that people are looking at when they're looking at that product. So that's the way that I'm going to have to I'm kind of pivoting away from what I have been doing before, which are just trying to do it on, on keyword based and just do it instead off of on a, a product level. And then my other product um, is called Bear Bam. Um, it is, this is the brand new one that I'll be walking through here in the next several weeks. But it is a Bakuchiol product, and I decided to, to launch this one. Um, I, I went back to a little bit of the research method on this one, and I did some research because uh, I always hear about these different ingredients and things, uh, and Bakuchiol is one of them. And I wound up finding out that there was only a couple, two or three, three or so Bakuchiol, which is an ingredient. Um, products on Amazon and it is um, and there it, so since there weren't a lot of them it, it it's a positive sign to me and then also I looked at the review count for the ones that were there and the reviews were low I mean in the low hundreds which means that, that I could still come in and and see how well I could come in and take advantage of that fact because the difference between 20, 30, 40 reviews and 100 is not that much. It starts to be a problem to me when they start to get to be 300, 400, 500. I don't necessarily want to compete with them. So that product um, was based off of research. And let me show you one of these uh, websites that I use to, to, to track these type of things. So here I am in Google Trends. And it's something that I use often. It looks like it's just trends.google.com slash trends. And so just here, I can put in Bakuchiol. And that's the search term. And what I want to see is just how it's doing, how many people are searching for it, or just basically what's the trend of it. And so this shows you on a daily, just for the past, looks like 24 hours here, that it looks like at this height here um, at 108 there's whatever time this is that 100 people are searching for but for me but for me what is more important is here to go to the past 12 months and see what the trend is and so it looks like it's in general an upward twin uh, an upward trend I don't want something that's starting here over the past two months and, and going down. So this is something that looks positive to me. It's at least going up and I would imagine that it would continue to go up or at least it's not giving me any indication that it's something that I should, 
that I should stay away from. So after, so I did my research on, on Amazon and found out that there's not a lot of competition for it. I also looked in here to just check the trends of it. And then, and then in Amazon, I also was looking at the, the review count for the people that were there. And then here, the trend looks like it's, it's going up. So that's a, a good enough indicator to me that this could be something worth pursuing. The so and this is the one that I'll be I'll be highlighting this one as well as Awakened Skincare. Um, and then I, I mentioned that there's the third audience based um, model where if you already have an audience, so you you're an influencer or you've been building an audience previously previously or planning on building an audience that that can be a good way to go as well. So there are, I have a client, for example, that um, is in the, the mommy space, I guess you'd call it, a, a parent, a mom, and uh, a mommy blogger. And so they have an audience of moms uh, that, that listen to them and follow what they put out. And they decided to create a product specifically for moms who are having certain issues with their with their toddlers or with their infants. And so that's always a great way to go, um, especially considering that, that you have the basically the eyeballs or the earballs on you already. They're listening to you, you're in touch with them, you've built a relationship with them, and they and they know, like, and trust you. And and you work with them to the, the restaurant model, the restaurant waiter model where they come to you or you, you ask them, hey, I'm considering creating a product. Um, what would you like to see? What would you what do you want to make sure it doesn't have or doesn't include ingredients, things like that? And then you collaborate on on coming up with the product together. That way works extremely, extremely well. It, 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 and when you have an audience already, it allows you to do pre-sales. So you can sell the product before it's even made and help you fund it. You know, it, it, you know, they'll give you the money ahead of time. Then you use that money to place the first order for your product when you're having it manufactured. And that keeps you from having to, to come up with all that money. It's really a great way to, to fund it. And it's really a great way to do product research. It's also a great way to, to figure out what people want. And it's a great way to do some testing with the product. So when you get the product formulated, you'll get some samples and then you can have a little review group or some samples, some testers inside that audience that will give you feedback on the product and let you know if it's too soft, it, it doesn't work well, it's too, it, it, the, the scent isn't good. You just have to be, you have to be a little bit careful because you know, you don't want to get too many opinions because everyone's going to have a different thought. But sometimes that can be a helpful, a helpful way to make sure that your product has uh, mass appeal, uh, appeals to everybody. Also, if you don't have an audience created, but you know, but you're very passionate about something, um, and it, let's say it's it's dandruff, for example and you've always had a problem with bad dandruff and you've tried things in the past that haven't worked and so you decided to create your own dandruff shampoo it would be helpful if you don't have that audience already to start building that audience and by building that audience you would need to have put out some sort of content that attracted people to you that, that and they were following you on on some platform or by email and then you would use that to that that thing that you that you wrote or that you put out there the content that you wrote put out there to attract them they'll give you their email addresses and then you are able to follow with them and build your audience that way and use that audience to launch um so those are the three slash four three and a half ways that uh, that i went about it hopefully that was helpful to you um, one thing that i I'm going to start putting together is a resource document that has all of the different resources in it that I wind up talking about in these recordings. So like I mentioned Fiverr for gigs and, and, and yesterday or in past video I talked about Clavio and email marketing or images or all those things. So I'm going to put together a document that has, it'll be a living document as well updated in real time that you'll have access to so that you can find it's like a Rolodex 
uh, for all of these different resources and have a place. So I've hunted for and tried many, many, many different solutions, different softwares. I've tried different people. You know, when I find a good person who writes great email copy for not a lot of money because I, you know, I don't like to spend a lot of money on stuff. I'm pretty cheap. I want to do things on the cheap. And so uh, when I find a cheap, good person, I'll add that person to the resource list. So if you want to get a copy of that, it's not ready yet, but when it is ready, I'll let you know this ready. Um, head over to theskincaresherpa.com, theskincaresherpa.com, and I, there'll be a place there where you can pop in your uh, email address. You'll be added to the list, and then when it get, when it's ready, uh, if it's not ready, by the time you, put, you know, give your email address, I'll make sure to send it over to you. So I think that is it for today. Um, yeah, um, pop your email address in there and I'll get that to you. And I will continue to record as I promised. And so let's climb this mountain. <laughs>